the places where there was most sunshine had fewer incidences in very simple terms. And then when you looked at what other secondary factors there might have been, this was, was made it interesting because in Spain, the modulating factor was temperature. So in places where there was higher temperature, there were also fewer incidences. But interestingly, in Italy, it was relative humidity. So the, when the relative humidity was about between 40 and 50 or 60 percent, that seemed to provide better conditions for the incidence to be higher. So we felt that, that we were onto something. So these are things that were affecting the population that was under similar conditions in lockdown. And then as a, as a test, if you like, we then looked at Australia to see what was happening there because being on the other side of the world, when we were approaching at the beginning, we were in spring going into summer, they were in autumn going into winter. And so if we were right, the theory would show that um, in, in Australia, you'd be getting the opposite happening. And that's exactly what we were finding. So you saw this in human populations where we'd had severe outbreaks and then you chose to look at bat populations where coronaviruses are very prevalent. Because we work with bats normally in our day to day, we then looked at over 500 species of bats around the world. And we found that bats are indeed animals that do carry coronaviruses. Most of the time, you know, they, they don't pass them to us or anything like that. This is not about killing bats. Um, and then we found that there was a correlation and those bats that were living or, or sleeping in caves in very large numbers were the bats that tended to have higher incidence of coronaviruses. And interestingly, for example, uh, the fruit bat that some people might be familiar with, it's a, it's a very large bat that's associated with tropical areas and they tend to be seen on trees, they, they have their roosts in trees. But there's two species of fruit bats that dwell in caves in very large numbers. And believe it or not, it's those two species that live in caves in large numbers that are infected by coronaviruses and the ones that live on trees aren't. So this sort of supports the fact that bats who have been living with coronaviruses for millions of years, something in the region of over 400 million years, they've sort of co-evolved, if you like, with the virus. They are showing similar correlations to the to what we were finding in our results so what does this mean exactly what does it mean for humans for us well what it tells us in a nutshell is that if we start behaving in sort of bat-like ways in other words uh, accumulating having large crowded groups of people coming together at night for example when there's very low uv radiation that's going to be a place where you're going more likely to be catching your, your coronavirus infection. Whereas if you are in an area which is open in the sunshine with high UV, then it's less likely that you're going to catch it. In Gibraltar, we're really well off because we've got really good sun um, UV levels. Um, and thanks to the Levanta, we've got relatively high relative humidities most of the year.